What up, family? This is the Decisive Element Podcast with Ronnie Portillo. Now let's get it. Deep breath. The shit out. Always, man. All right, everybody. We're here with James, my main James Lada. Yes, sir. Right? On Instagram. Go to at goda.lava. Right? And we're about to get into some, some shit, man. I've known this dude now that I realized for a goddamn long time. Family friend. One of my oldest buddies over here. Um, my oldest friend, actually, Jay. I've known him more than long than anybody else I've lived, bro. Oh, wow. Since I was seven years old. What? So, yeah, bro, because Cabana Club. Oh, damn. He was my first friend that I met when I came to Vegas, bro, and with our little crew that we had there. Small world. So a small world that you come there and all the shit that we got and all the experience and all the... I mean, we were just talking about the stories that we got, man. Yeah. So I'm excited for this podcast. I hope you guys are excited to be here. This is going to be interesting. Um, and we're going to hear this story for how he came from playing ball to getting a little hurt and we'll get into all that shit to recovery and now where we're at and where we're going now man so hey bro thanks for being here man thanks for being on and i'm glad you're here man i'm glad everything and i'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this conversation bro. thanks for having me first off of course bro appreciate so that. let's just get into it bro so i mean we'll get into the let's just get to the story to begin bro okay. you young kid from my understanding been hooping basketball has been what you've been doing for a long time yeah Right. And what, what, what you've been doing that since high school or how old were you when you were Yeah, since high school. Okay. Um, didn't go to college right away. Uh huh. Um, I think I took like maybe four years of a break after eventually went to a Juco in Arizona, Uh Phoenix college, shout out the bears. So I went there and, uh, my second year there early in my second year, I got in a car accident, a fatal car accident and, um, changed my life. When you say fatal, did someone else die? No. But um, okay, but it it killed you in a way. Yeah, definitely yeah, killed yeah. me. My dreams, my your hopes. whole life. Yeah, yeah. So my spine is fused from C one to T two after this accident. What does that mean, bro? Like, how long is that your back? Closer to the top of my neck. Okay, and then going down. So like, the, I would say the top third of my spine. Okay, got you. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. fused. It's fused uh, with metal, two metal bars, and then uh, metal screws on each side, like. I think I have a picture. I'll show you later. But, okay. Um, so basically, I could put it on the screen if <clears throat> if you're listening to audio. Check out YouTube. I'll throw it on the screen. Got you. Dope. So um, this is how the day went. It's December fifteenth, two thousand fifteen. I'm doing my uh, finals for school all day on on the computer with two other teammates at my house. We're switching off. You know, they're playing Call of Duty. Yeah. I'm doing my assignment. <laughs> I finished my assignment. Yeah. I pass it to them. Now I'm on the sticks. So we're doing that, and it's like 10 p.m. I'm like, I'm hungry. I'm going to go get McDonald's, get in the car, start going, like not even two lights down. I'm going straight through a green light. Some young girl has a um, yield to traffic, so she's turning head on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She turns last second. We're head on collision. The top of my head hits the ceiling. My spine instantly fuses, like, or not fuses, it uh, it just crushes. You know yeah, what I mean? Yep. I'm, I'm instantly paralyzed. Compacts. God, instantly yeah. paralyzed, bro. Wake up five seconds later. I'm like, what the fuck? What's going on? I have a passenger with me. He's like moving around, moving around. I'm like, dang, bro, what's happening? I see the the windshield. It's like a spider web. You can tell. I look at the radio and I see the engine coming through. And I'm like, hold on, something's not right. And I don't hear nothing. It's just like a siren, like a loud, you know, just like the movies. It's so yeah. weird, bro. Yeah. Just like the movies. So I see my passenger get out. He reaches for the door handle. So automatically, I do the same thing in my head while I'm looking at him. So he gets gets around, starts walking around. He gets to my side, and I'm still doing that, but I look at the door handle, and I don't see my hand. My heart drops. Oh, my God. My heart drops, bro. I'm like, (gasps) big old breath. He opens the door. He's like, come on, get out. Stop playing. Stop playing. I'm just like, I have no words. I'm like, I'm trying. I'm trying. I tell him to grab my phone and call my dad. That's, I just remember kept saying his number like 461-2120, 461-2120. He calls my dad. I tell my dad, I'm like, dad, I think I just got in a car accident. He's like, just walking me through it. He's like, all right, first take a deep breath. He's like, stay with me. Just keep taking deep breaths. He said, this is what's going to happen. They're going to take you to the hospital. I'm going to meet you there. Just keep breathing. So met him at the hospital, still tripping out, but. He ended up coming. He met me. I think he was in San Diego for a wedding, at my cousin's wedding. But he drove down, met me there. All my family came down. 
And uh, they pretty much waited for like the next day. I think the next doctor came from India and it was a seven hour, seven hour procedure I had to do on my neck, like open up the back of my neck. It was crazy. Damn. Yeah. So he did that. And then I was good. I think I was in the hospital for a couple months after that. Neck brace and everything. Finally get out of there, go back to Vegas. Um, wait for a settlement and everything, you know. Were you moving? No, I was, but not like, not how you think. It was really stiff, bro. Like everything, everything hurted every day. I couldn't sleep, eating, like just living. Yeah. I was throbbing. It was so crazy. Yeah. Bro. It's the biggest, <laughs> biggest change. Yeah. Like, hell know, yeah. The night before that happened, I was dunking. I had a game. Like, yeah. I think I hit a game winner. I have to, or I hit a buzzer beater at halftime. So it was just, it was crazy. It was very humbling. Yeah, for sure. Changed my life a lot. So what has been the process from you being there to now coming out of that? Or like, what is, what has been going on and how, what was the biggest struggle for you? I guess then just, just the initial thing, just not moving how I'm so used to moving, you know? Yeah. Getting well, up, walking to the fridge or just even going to the bathroom, bro. My showers are like, I think that started <laughs> yeah. off being like almost like five hours. My sister would be so patient with me because I lived with her at the time. Yeah. The shower would just be running and running. I'm slowly trying to like take off just my clothes. Your body like yeah, that, yeah. Bro. It was crazy. I, I, had to, I had to get good at it. So wait, you had the, uh, like, so you couldn't move your arm up to grab the door handle, but then you were able to like start moving after you had the surgery. Yeah. That, well, how, how was this? Yeah. Physical therapy and all that. Or oh, what's yeah. up? So I had physical therapy, occupational therapy. I seen like at least three or four doctors, like every single day for the months I was in the hospital. And I couldn't leave the hospital until I could take off my clothes and shower. And I had to do it in front of like these three doctors. And I tried, I think like three times before I actually did it. It was embarrassing. But yeah. It definitely, um, Damn, what did that do to you, man? How'd you feel during that time? It was a lot. It, it changed my perspective on life. You know, not everyone's born with two eyes, two yeah. healthy arms, two, you know. Yeah. Just everything we have, I feel like we take it for granted. And I know I did for a second, but yeah, I try not to now. Yeah. But the process was more than humbling. I was just thankful to see my family and friends again. That's really what, all I was focused on. Yeah. You know, I was Damn, like, obviously bro. no basketball, no school. No, so. hell yeah. I remember I got one car accident and it was late and it was like driving. I remember it was like with one of my, when I was young and my ex-girlfriends and my girlfriend at the time and this big ass, like, I don't even know, 1500 truck hit us in a PT cruiser. Oh damn. Bro. And I saw it coming and I yelled and like she moved and it hit the back of the PT cruiser and we like spinned and then hit on the wall. I don't even know. I, I, I like pulled my bicep. Yeah. <laughs> so I had like ripples in it. So, I mean, that was pretty, that's, that's, that's the most I ever got, but that right there, I remember being in a car, bro, that car accident ain't cool, man. No. You know? So it's like, and then, and then when shit like that really happens, I can't even imagine, dude. Like you pretty much had to learn how to walk again. Yeah. Everything. I, I, did, I had to learn how to walk again, how to, I couldn't move my arms. Like this is as much I was trying to do it. And they're like, lift your arms up. And I was like, I remember practicing it time after time after time. It was frustrating. Yeah, because, man, like, you don't even, when you say, when I hear you say, I was reaching for the door, like, it's literally just a thought. Like, you don't even, it, you think you're reaching for the door. It's right. a thing that just happens. And then for you to say, reach for the door in your head and nothing's happening man. must have been a, oh, man, that's crazy. Yeah, your brain, like, you know, sends a message to your spine, yeah. which is all your nerves. And yeah. that's where your movement system, your motor system. So that wasn't working, but I didn't know right away. Once I found out, I was just like, something's not right. Yeah. Something's not right. <laughs> <laughs> something's not cool, man. Yeah. So you got there, the, all the doctors, all the surgeries. So what started happening when you got out? Like what was, what, what was your, what, I guess, how were you creating your life then, man? I took like three to four years to myself just to like, you know, let everything sit in and soak in and evaluate like, you know, what I wanted to do. Cause right away I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I still am trying to figure it out, but I think we got a little path now. We'll get yeah, into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you, yeah, see, yeah. you see where I'm kind of going. Yeah. But um, I took like three, four years off. Uh, more than blessed to have my family, you know, help me out. My sister, my dad, my brother, my mom, all of them really helped out a lot. Hell yeah! Shout out to the family. Yeah, man. shout out to the family. You know, gotta throw them in there. Hell yeah! But um, they helped me and gave me my space and my time and my distance, so I can just figure out what I'm gonna do. 
you know, because yeah. I knew I wasn't going to sit on my butt all day and yeah. keep relying on them to feed me and clothe me and do all these things. So definitely took three, four years just to myself until I could start, you know, moving better and actually just changing my thoughts. What did that look like? Yeah, I was about to say, what did that look like, changing your thoughts? Like, what was, when did you realize, like, shit, I got to figure this out now? Man, honestly, I'd say closer to, like, a year or two years ago is really when I started thinking more positively. You so know? what was going on before, man? I would. I don't want to say depression because I, I don't think I was depressed, but something closer in that direction. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was just re- really down, like, I would sleep or lay in the bed all day. Like, I wasn't moving. Mm-hmm. Just, like, not really motivated. Yeah. You know, to do much. Grieving, kind of, yeah, man. Yeah, kind of grieve, you know. You know, because, like, damn, bro. Like, from what I hear, you're a badass basketball star. Like, yeah. you were trying to do your thing, getting that shit moving. Used to being an athlete. And all of a sudden, like, that's where, like, we identify so much with our personality when we're young and the shit that we do. Yeah. That we identify that. So, I'm sure that was, like, a fucking process to get out of. Man, man I don't know what to do. I'm, like, I'm so used to being an athlete and you yeah. know, running around and jumping I'm yeah, like, yeah i gotta learn not to jump or not to be an athlete like but it's definitely helped you know mold the character and the person i am trying to be yeah and get to right now to today got you so what was so the depression like what was going on the thought process like i'm not gonna be able to do anything or what was that type of things going through your mind in those moments yeah like you know i can't i can't go to the gym i, I love the gym you yeah know? dedicate an hour a day that's four percent of your day at least to the gym so i love doing that couldn't go to the gym i just couldn't you know play basketball be with friends do active stuff hiking you know yeah going to the park shooting around a whole bunch of little stuff that i i guess i kind of took for granted yeah you know for sure couldn't do nothing active like i was used to doing yeah so and what started, what, so then let's get into what started, what was the catalyst that made you change that, bro? A few things. Um, mainly, though, I'd probably say just being tired of, you know, being stuck in that routine of not doing much. Like, I, I would think about other stuff. Like, I wanted to do this. I wanted mm-hmm. to do that. But kind of didn't know when to start or, or where to start. Got you. So... Slowly but surely, I started going to the gym. Just what that know, looked like? Oh, just nothing but stretching at first. Okay. Just trying to do, like, little movements, you know, like yeses and nos, like small, small, small stuff. Little, like, baby steps, you know, mm-hmm. that would help me get back into it. I would shoot around a little bit, even if it was for only, like, five minutes, ten minutes. Yeah. When, you know, I'm used to shooting for, for hours, but little, little by little, it was, I was getting there. And then how, how would your body feel after you did those things, though? They would ache, and it would be really sore. It would throb throughout the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, I'm... It was just like a pain. It's, I'm going to do this, so I'm going to deal with this. Right. Like, I'm still going to push through. Yeah. I want to do it. I'm going to try. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of where it was at right there. Hell, yeah. Damn, man. Like, I can't imagine, like... It's tough. Like, I can't even imagine not being able to move like that, dude. Bro. Like, the most I've ever... Like, I fractured my wrist one time. And like I told you about my knee right now, and yeah. I'm really running too much that good. But those, these are like little things. Man. Minor, yeah. Yeah, that's like nothing when it comes compared to what you were just experiencing. If I was stuck in a bed, yeah, bro, I feel like I would go crazy for a while. Like, bro. You know? <laughs> I started to get like acne on my back. I'm like, what is happening? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Bro, hours and hours just laying there, being stuck in the bed. Like, And I have to lay flat. There's no pillow. Oh, yeah. I can't turn on my side. I can't, you know, I can't even lay in my stomach. So I'm literally like in a coffin for hours and hours and hours out the day. Damn, man. Yeah. Damn, bro. (laughs) It's It's crazy. What's up, Mike? No, I was just going to say it's like it's crazy to hear all this stuff. I think some people who might be like listening or watching right now, they they don't understand. Like, yes, you were at this, but you seem you were at this point. But like, it seems like now you're at such a so, so much of a more mobile point in your life you know what i mean it's like just even seeing you from this past summer i think it was to like now just seeing you online on like instagram and stuff like that just hooping again and yeah it's 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 like i don't know i I just feel like some people have the wrong idea maybe yeah it's just like like you're you're coming back right now like you're you're we're still in in the process still in the process we're still in the process but that's why i wanted to connect and talk to you man because i've seen i've been hearing and then little by little i mean it just kind of flowed flowed this way yeah we knew it and 
you know, little we just found out our connection went deeper than the night that my brother died. Yeah. So like I'm gratitude and appreciate that and you being there for that and my friends and my family while we were there. Love, bro. Um But yeah, man, it seems that um the trials turn us on to some new shit, man. Definitely. I agree. You know, and it kinda one one thing I always think about, like your pain, our deepest pain is is kind of always our medicine at the same time. Yeah. And when I mean the medicine, like my deepest pain was probably like seeing my brother die, witnessing that, watching it, doing CPR on his ass, feeling, smelling the aroma, you know, Whoa. smelling the aroma. And now, now, damn, like, now it's crazy that you were there, bro, because I swear. And that's, we'll talk about I mean, memory, bro. Yeah. Memory's a trip because I don't remember you being there, bro. I, do, I remember one specific person being there until you started telling me. Yeah. And then it was like, boom light bulb oh shit there you were a, there yeah, yeah you were there with what's his name d wazy and yeah. the freaking uh, the, all these different people who were there and i was just like shit and then the same thing that happened to my uncle when i walked into that realm and he told me my brother had passed i thought i'd just snap my fingers and turn around right he let me know years later that i actually swung at him and right tried to, yeah right <laughs> i tried to hit his ass like hell no my brother ain't gone yeah and then i turn around and then you know having those conversations with my people so my brother died in 2009 or yeah 2008 um, and that initiated uh, a whole nother path for me, man. And I feel like, if I'm honest, that's why I feel like I'm here right now. Just keep 100. And, yeah. I, and if I can see a reflection in you or I see a reflection in you saying the same thing about this go to thing we're about to talk about in a little while. Yeah. Because your deepest pain is now turned into a medicine for you that you kind of want to share with other people. Definitely. Because this is just part of your lifestyle now. Mm hmm. You see it everywhere you go. When you saw my YouTube, my, you saw my kid on Instagram. But, bro, look what he's doing right here. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Right? It's natural shit. Our bodies are made to do this. And we'll talk about that right now, man. So I just want to recognize you. Glad you're here, man. Glad Appreciate you're moving. That, bro. Yeah, bro. And how the world connects and how we get back here. It's crazy. fucking crazy. And like, it's wild. Yeah. And the podcast um, we did yesterday was, like I said, it was a lot about, I don't like the word networking anymore. It's like connecting. Yeah. Right? And how people like how people connect in that certain way and how it all naturally flows on its own. Yeah. Don't force shit to happen. You force it is going to throw the natural curve off. Right. And you ain't going to feel like you really want to feel when that happens. Yeah. Not a genuine feeling. Exactly. Yeah, man. I agree. So, um, what got you to, once you started healing, man, and started trying to decide, I'm going to get this, like, what was that path look like? And what, what kept you going? And, How'd you find the coaches? How'd you find the inspiration? What kept you just fucking motivated to keep moving it, man? Family is really big motivation for me. You know, they always push me to do better and, for, you know, want better for myself. Yeah. So before I found Goda, I was in the gym. I remember like two good times I tried in the gym and I, I was getting somewhere. I was gaining weight. Excuse me. I was yep. gaining weight. I was, uh, Going to the gym every day, trying to be more active, but I had pain, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. People always say, like, you know, no pain, no gain. Like, to a certain extent, I understand that. But y your body, you should really identify pain and see, like, you know, like, if it's your joint or if it's something that's really hurting. Mm -hmm. Or if it's just, like, a good pain, a good burn. Like, you know, I'm just yeah. actually, like, my central nervous system yeah. is actually working. Yeah. You know? So, I would have bad pain. The first two times that I tried to hit the gym, and this is probably within like a a year span, I went to the gym for like two or three months, was lifting, I actually gained, I got probably like 15, 20 pounds, so I felt, I can notice the difference, and I felt good, but there was, there was still pain there, Yeah, you know, and the, even the same thing with the second time, I took off a couple months, came back to the gym, lifting with uh, just friends, other people, even my dad, and I just kept noticing like this pain that was unbearable and just, it, it, I wasn't getting nowhere. And I knew, like, I'm not going to keep lifting if this is the pain that I'm going to get. And this is how I'm going to feel. Like, you know, it's almost not worth it. Yeah. It's like you're you're going plus one to go back minus two. Gotcha. Going, and I kept doing that. That's how it really felt. And then I found Goda towards the end of 2020. I would say, like, November, December. And I seen it a couple times at first. Just, like, you know, tapping in, just a little interested here by here. But I didn't really fully commit until after I tried it. And I met with this dude. His name's Anton Coleman. Shout out to Anton Shout Coleman. Out, stamped by AC. Go check out his Instagram. He's a GOAT. So he was out here for a UFC fight. And the, the UFC fighter actually uh, hired him. 
you know, to mm-hmm. be on his camp, do like a session movement and all that. Yeah. This guy would tape his ankles before his fights. This uh, particular fight, he didn't tape his ankles, and he ended up winning, like I think first round or something like that. Yeah. So I seen Antoine was out here. I hit him up on Instagram. I've been talking to him for a couple months before, just small stuff, you know, yeah. like I'm interested, like, you know, give me a little feedback or just help me on little stuff. Yeah. So I seen he was out here, took advantage of it, asked him if we could link up. We ended up linking up. He gave me an assessment. He gave me a workout. We ended up hanging out probably like for a couple hours for the day. It was cool. I took him out to Canes because they don't have Canes. Oh, yeah. He's from Baltimore. Okay. So I Canes. took him out to eat. Yeah, Sauce I took him to Canes. Boss, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shout out Canes. Yeah. <laughs> so I took him to Canes. He was like, oh, we don't have this over there. So it was cool. Sitting there just chopping with him. But Antoine's really what helped me, you know, fully commit to go to. Okay. And I asked him, I was like, bro, is this, you know, is it, you think it's something that could, could help me? Yeah. And he, this is coming from a guy that had two hip surgeries. I think he also had like a, a ruptured Achilles. He had all types of injuries. Yeah. He's an athlete too, so. He's like, bro, this will definitely help you. And so definitely help you. So I did a workout with him for maybe like 45 minutes to an hour. That first workout, I didn't have back pain. I went home. I felt like more fluidity, my blood flow, just everything. I'd had no pain. And that's when I knew. I was like, this is the truth, bro. I'm, I, need it. I need it more. I yeah. need more and more, more. So he um, helped me push the – Get in contact with the right people to get certified. So right now I'm in the middle of that. Okay. Getting my uh, cert for that. And, yeah, that's really what Antoine did for me. Antoine helped me a lot. Hell, yeah. Yeah. Once so. again, shout out to Antoine. Shout out Antoine. I always praise that dude. Yeah, I man. Advise everyone to follow him. Because what were you doing for pain before, bro? I still see doctors every single month. And what I would do is, like, you know. Still now. Yeah. Yeah. I would still take the med- medications that they prescribe me because they would help but temporary yeah it wasn't no long term no like you know nothing that i felt really was helping gotcha it's like i almost needed more okay yeah just to, to get you what you really wanted to feel right it's like you had to stay on that shit bro and, and you don't i don't want that no you know you get addicted to all this exactly shit, bro like uh, i get constipated i couldn't use the restroom yeah. like you know just more problems came with that yeah but now with that go to i'm trying to lean off of it more you know i definitely notice a difference less pain and everything overall like i love it yeah everywhere i go i start assessing people i'm just like you know <laughs> naturally looking how they're walking yeah how they're moving even their kids like it's so funny in my head i'm just like woda 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 and that stands for worst of all worst of all time athletes or actions you know okay what they're practicing their movements okay just the opposite of goda but I love it, bro. It's really helped. Yeah. Everything I'm doing. And so what is it that what is it, bro? Like explain it, dog. So GOTA stands for greatest of all time athletes or actions. You can replace the last uh, letter in the acronym for athletes or actions. And um it's just a certain movement pattern that all the GOATs, you know, Michael Jordan, Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, even the young, newer ones, Simone Biles, like Jim yeah. all them move a certain way. Yeah, and they have a security system, and they never, they almost never get hurt. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna get hurt, you know, I almost want someone else to bump into me or to hit me, and for me to get hurt. But if I'm getting hurt and no one's touching me, who can you blame? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are you gonna blame your genes? Are you gonna blame your parents? Yeah. Are you gonna blame your coach? Mm-hmm. You can't blame no one else but yourself. Got you. So something's wrong with you know the way you're moving, mm. and it's hard. I was never a a believer of that at first you know but yeah. through pain now i'm starting to understand it more and i'm trying to pass it on and preach it to people and the, it's you know the younger people don't really want to not that they don't wanna accept it it's harder to accept because it you know it doesn't relate to them yeah it doesn't apply to them yeah they're healthy they're still developing they're not like you know as frail or fragile as the older athletes or older people but once, like, you, once you get hurt, you definitely start looking around for answers. Like, <laughs> yeah. well, well, maybe this might make sense. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like the pain is the teacher, man. Like, oh, shit, I might have been doing this shit wrong the whole, whole goddamn time. Right, time. right. Yeah. I mean, because that's what I tell you. We had a little conversation about mine because my, he- my left knee is having an issue since I've been trying to do this marathon and try, uh, like, the marathon and get longer and longer running. Yeah. So it was like clearly something's not going on. And I think I told you as early, I'm on this yoga trip right now. Yeah. So I'm doing, I'm like 15 days straight yoga and I'm trying to do it straight every day. Because what I like about it is I get sore, 
but it's like a, an okay sore. Right. It's like what you said. And they preach the same thing. It's identifying like, the pain. Identifying the pain. It make If you go into it, make sure it's not a sharp pain. Right. Make sure it's like a, what'd you say? It's like a, I forgot. I'm still learning this just shit. Like a, just a like norm, a burn. Like, It's an okay pain. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, you're pushing it pain. It's not too crazy. So rest in that position. Don't force yourself to go right. anymore. And um, it's really been helping. I've been finding out where I'm tight, where I'm like, oh, okay, this is what it is. Yeah. And that's why I told you earlier, I got into a little bit more, you know, the energy film, the field. So if like people are not aware, you know, a lot of Eastern traditions classify the right side of the body as the masculine yeah. side, yeah. right? And yeah. the left side of the body is a feminine side. And, you know, and I can see being in the military, very masculine, fucking move, move, move. Let's keep going. And right. then just keep going. Put your head down and go, go, go. Yeah. That's all I kept. That's how I kept training. I would take, okay, I need a recovery day. So I need to chill. Right. But I wasn't stretching enough. I wasn't doing the basic movements enough. And still, and, and once I started actually going to more training and understanding, OK, like stretching isn't a warm up. No. Right. Active movements are a warm up. Right. You got to actively move, but just do lighter shit or right. don't know weights just to move to warm up. The stretching is for afterwards and where you can just sit and be. And that's like its own thing. Yeah. It's not part of your work. It's not part of your workout, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I realize that now, once again, like my pain, <laughs> it's like Bro. I've been doing too much. And then it's like the whole masculine and feminine come and solve because I can see and I see it when it really into culture, how we just keep going, 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 going. Yeah. And then we no wonder why like divorces are happening and we can get big, right? We can go Bro. down that whole rabbit that's hole, whole another, right? Yeah. That's the, I feel like that's what I'm learning. Like when people say the patriarchy, that's what they're talking about. It's not so much talking about men or the issue. It's talking about we have over masculinated our culture yeah. in the sense that a woman can't even be home a long time or a husband with a brand new baby for a month or two when the baby just came. Yeah. When we know that's the most important part time. That's that the, the most important time. Right? Put that, that freaking skin to skin time. Yeah, bro. The daddy need to beat her to help with the mama. Yeah. But we don't allow the feminine our, our, and within even males to come out. Yeah. Men don't want to cry. Well, guess what? That's why you're so angry, bro. Yeah. You know? That guard is up. Yeah. Yeah. So then how are you really connecting with your boys? Hmm. Right? How are you really connecting to your lady? Man. You know, how are you really connecting to your kids? And then the whole, and then you can just look at all the issues with men, man, in jail, drug addicts, committing suicide. Yeah. You don't see the majority of population with women doing that. It's very true. Right? So it's like, that's one of my things too, man, because I feel like it's all related. The body, for me, the body, I'm learning that the body is a system, is is the thing. Yeah. Like you said, the nervous system. Yeah. The nervous system, our senses are kind of what tells us what we're in reality. Yeah. Our brain helps us process that reality mm -hmm. and it folk it's a focus to get to where we want to go to. But our body, our senses, our smell, our feelings, that connection we build in, that's where the magic is really at. Yeah. So get everybody, get in your body, man. Right? Tell them. Yeah, we gotta get in our bodies, because that's what you really that's when you find joy. Right? So you doing this is bringing back to your joy. Definitely. Of playing basketball. Yep. Of moving. So tell us about that, man. How how you been enjoying the process now that that's been happening? Because I mean, I see you slamming, bro. I see you putting them dunks. <laughs> I'm like, damn, look at this big ass motherfucker, just bam. Man, how's that been for you? It's been a journey. I I love it though. So first off, I haven't stretched in like five months. Hell yeah. And I still like you know, I give a lot of praise to Goda because the the a lot of the drills we do keep my body almost like in an anabolic state to where I'm like, mm. you know, okay. I'm always ready. Mm. So like, um, I really don't stretch. It's crazy to me okay. too, to even say that or think about it. Cause I yeah, used to yeah. stretch for like an hour game, hit the foam roll for like yeah. 30 minutes, you know, yeah. I, I would love stretching. I love doing that. But ever since doing this, there's really no need to stretch. I'm going to need to find out this shit then, bro. Bro, I'm telling yeah. you, you got to try it. It's, I will. It's some new, some new stuff for sure. It's that mobility work, man. Yeah. It's getting bigger. It is. It's definitely blowing up. NFL players are on it now. Yeah. There's one NBA player, Jalen. Uh, dang, I forget his last name. Some guy, Jalen, though, he's, he went to University of Nevada. Now he plays for the Raptors. Okay. In the NBA. And he's go to, he did his whole recode through, um, I forget who he did it through. He did it with uh, some coaches, though, and now he's like, he's good. He's fine. He's straight. He's like non-contact injury resistant. So yeah. he, he, everything from his jumping to moving, like I, you can just watch him and you could tell. And compared to the old, his older pitchers, even in college, mm -hmm. he was not moving wrong, just not moving in a secure system. Yeah. You know, it's not as fluid. Yeah. Yeah. Just not as, I don't know. 
the film is really what Gota praises and pushes for slow motion technology. So, you know, I show you a video of you walking slow motion. You can't lie. We can't lie. We can't deny it, bro. We're both yeah. watching the same thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Whether you want to admit it or not, we're both looking at the same thing. Got you. But um, as far as for me and my journey back, I love hooping. You know, it's my dream. So nowadays I'll go play with my guys, my friends, play at least like eight or nine games straight. Won't be sore. Won't be aching. We'll finish the our run or whatever we're doing, and I'll feel like I can go again, like another eight or nine games. Yeah. But – What's more important is the next day when I wake up, I would wake up sore, aching, like, yeah. you know, uh-huh. I'm not doing nothing today. Like, yeah. no, complete opposite. Like a hangover, bro. Like a hangover, bro. <laughs> yeah. Literally, just like a hangover. Yeah. But now I'm like, I'm excited to do it again. I'm like, where's the next run? Yeah. Where are we going to play at today? And all my other friends are like, no, I'm hurting. My left ankle hurts or my knee hurts or, you know, just little stuff like that. Yeah. So then I'll throw it in there and be like, I, I can help you. Got gotcha. you. I-, I can help fix that, you know. Yeah. But. So I've, we talk about the runs, man. So we got lava runs. Oh yeah, I've been doing lava runs. That's a uh, ever since COVID, the pandemic and stuff happened. Yeah, it was harder to play basketball. Yeah, so, they took the goddamn rims bro, off. They at took the, the rims basket- off at the park. <laughs> at the park, bro. How oh. are they gonna take the rims off at the park? I was like, can I just like, go shoot with my son, bro? Nah, it's crazy. Dude, that's crazy. That is nuts. Wasn't that? That's wild. It was, <laughs> bro. I was go. You all right over there, bro? Oh what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like I had a pen in my mouth. And I took a sip of coffee. I don't know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> but yeah, man, they took the goddamn rims off. I was like, dude, this is nuts. Yeah. So yeah, wild. so I could see that. So what did you just start doing? Just get I a just bunch started, of boys. And- yeah, I started running out of court, and I'm like, yo, who wants to play? Uh huh. Pitch in, throw me you know five, six, seven bucks. Yep. Each, and then that'll help cover the fee because I always put the money up. Okay. And now it's getting a little more organized, more structured, and. It's getting really good. Competition's getting better. The word's getting out. People always hit me. Random people on Instagram like, yo, can I come? Can I come? Yeah. I see I see all your posts. You're like, yo, who's playing today? Yeah, yeah exactly. He makes cool. videos out of dude, man. Yeah. Some dope little videos no, and shit out of it. I, I was get like, serious Damn. with it. Hell yeah, why not? Everyone's like, Are you coaching? And I'm like, No, it's not coaching. I'm just, you know, trying to make it organized, structured. Yeah. So everyone has fun. Got you, man. But yeah, but you get really some well. people there, bro. Oh yeah, and y'all have the videos from Austin. I was like, these fools are get bailed, bro. bro. I, gotta, I gotta run tonight, nine, nine to eleven at Tarkanian. Yeah, damn, nine to eleven, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. If you ever free, come check it out. I will, bro. <laughs> Let's just come out and chill. I'm like my little five, fucking five foot eight asses. So sit there, be like, all right, yeah, I see what's going on. <laughs> I might throw the ball one time, but I ain't gonna nothing do crazy. Right. Shit, I haven't played basketball forever, bro. <sighs> We used to play fucking hockey outside with that little motherfucker over there. Oh, Jay, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the rollerblades? <laughs> with the rollerblades, bro. Yeah. That's <laughs> throwing it way back. Hell yeah, man. So what do you plan to do now, man? What are you trying to do? You trying to get this go-to thing off or, like, trying to do consulting? Or what is the what does the future look like for you, man? Yeah, so after this, after I finish my cert, I'm aiming to be the first rep out here for Gota. So that's okay. really one of my big goals. I'll be the first one out here. And it's cool to have a map. So you can see where, like, the closest go-to coach is to you, you know? Okay. Right now, I think there's three in Cali. That's the closest to us right now. But yeah, I want to be the first rep out here and slowly try to get, you know, I'll probably just work with the high school team first. Gotcha. Stick with that. Whatever they give me, girls basketball, men's basketball, even if it's, you know, soccer or whatever, I want to stay with that team for two seasons and have no injuries, no non-contact injuries. Gotcha. Then after that, you know, try to approach someone bigger, mm-hmm. maybe even the college or even the Raiders. Yeah. That's what my goal is to hopefully try to yeah, get there. Yeah, to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Raiders are coming for you, bro. Right. That's where we're going. Tell them. Yeah. Bro, I can't lie. Man, the, the shit that I've been hearing, man, but how you got – your spine is – you got rods in your back, bro. Bro, it's, it's nuts. And the fact that you're not, like, giving up, that's the thing that fucking I admire a lot, bro, because people get hurt – you always got a choice, man. Yeah. You know, and then one thing I wrote, one thing on writings was like, you can always be open or closed, bro. You open to what the world can bring you. And it might suck, but everything's a lesson, dog. Yeah. Like, no matter what, everything's a lesson. And you can decide to make it a lesson, or you can decide to turn it into, like, punishment. Yeah. You know, where no, it's just seriously. like, my life is shit now. I'm fucking nothing. I can't do anything I want to do <laughs> in my life, man. And that's not what you're doing. No. You're like, fuck that. We're going to turn up right now. Yeah, I'm trying to flip it, you know, turn these negatives into positives somehow. That's, yeah, that's right. Hell yeah, bro. I mean, that's what I see. And that's why I want to call it because you are the decisive element, bro. I see the reflection of you being the decisive element in your life, man. You making the shit move. 
you making this shit happen. And I just like, I wanted to bring that light to here and show you a little story, show your story and how it was, man. Cause I mean, like I said, we went back, man. And if I might ask you, bro, like how did my brother shit affect you, bro? Man, it affected me a lot. It how was, old were you at that time? Too? I was a sophomore in, in high school, bro. Damn, bro. Bro, it was nuts. I remember going to school the next week, like, like a dog with his tail in between his legs. Like, you know, like I was on punishment or something. Yeah. Something happened to me. It, it really felt like my brother had gone, you know, yeah. somebody close to me. But it's definitely helped me. At first, you know, it was tough. But now the overlooking, like looking back at it, I think it's helped me a lot, bro. It's helped me mold me into who I am today, you know. Yeah. Help me keep going, remind myself, push myself. Even with your own shit, too. Even with my own stuff, yeah. Yeah. But I always, trust me, I always think about him and. I always see, like, you know, Sis will post something, and I always show love, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's always there, bro. Just, oh, just I know. know that. Even yeah, in he all here, of us. bro. Yeah. Yeah, he here. There ain't no dying, bro. Energy don't die, bro. Right, right. So we moving. Like, they they proving that shit more and more with fucking science, and energy keeps moving. Like, yeah. we all just fucking energy, dog. Yeah. And the static energy in the world just keeps moving. So, like, I'm not... I don't, I don't want to hold the reality too much, but that shit was like a deep thing for me. And I, it started my journey, man, to like get in here. Yeah. And that's why I, I feel like what wants to come out of me is everybody's the decisive element in their life, man, because yeah. life is going to fuck you up. Yeah. It don't matter. Like, even if, you know, I like, Jordan's, I like Jordan Peterson. I always think of him when I say this. He's like, we don't need to produce more unnecessary suffering. Suffering's already going to happen with living. Right. It's like, inevitable. It's in, you're gonna get a flat tire. You're yeah. gonna someone gonna get hurt. Some shit. Like, some random shit's gonna happen. Yeah. But why we gotta do more unnecessary suffering to each other? Because right. that's really unnecessary. Right. It's, a lot of this shit is unnecessary. But they're patterns, man. They are. So then, once you see if like they're necessary in the sense, if they keep coming up, the same shit keep happening in your life, man. It's because you're not making a, you're not changing. Yeah. You're not making a, di- you're not taking a different path. Same results. Not, yeah. yeah. What is that Einstein fucking quote, right? I forget it. Same results expect about. different. Uh, no. It's, a, it's like the definition of insanity. Yeah. The yeah. Definition Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different a different result. result. Yeah. Mustache Mike coming in the bro. fucking thing. There you go. Dropping bombs, hey, bro. bro. I got jokes and I got knowledge. <laughs> Hey, we're ready. We're, you know, speaking of jokes, Mustache Mike trying to be, he, not trying. He's going to be a comedian, bro. He's going to be a comedian. He's going to be. We ain't trying. We, we, hey, I got to get like a little Yoda right here, bro. <laughs> Baby Yoda. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll get Yoda. I'll get a little Yoda right here and be like, there's no trying. We just fucking do, Holmes. <laughs> do or do not. Right. It, it, is, it is crazy how much people say try when they're doing stuff like, yeah, I'm trying to do this. You're right. Like, it, it is a bad word to use all the time. Yeah, because what you're not you're you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. do you're, you're either doing it or you're not. My dumb ass looks stupid up here. I'm like, uh, what? Well, yesterday's podcast, I was like, I couldn't say respir- respir- I can't say it right now. Respiratory, reciprocity. No, he's oh, like re- oh. reciproca. Yeah, something like that. Recipro. He's trying to say reciprocating, but he said it. In reciprocating. A, yeah, oh. like I couldn't. But I couldn't. Reciproc- uh, uh, get, 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 get. <laughs> Bro, I was like, what? The, I can't word. fucking I can't. talk. Reciprocating. You know, give and rec- you know, give and receive, man. The rule of reciprocation. Yeah. Whatever. See, I barely can say it right now. My yeah. sex looks at. But that's part of my shit, man. And this is who I am, so I'm trying to show up. I'm not, and we can't do I mean we can't try anymore, man. We gotta do this shit. And motherfuckers like you are doing it in your life, man. Definitely trying, bro. I appreciate you. We my gonna, bad. We I'm gonna doing take it. I'm that. Doing that's it. it. We're gonna learn because we gotta relearn. You know, I was having um dude, I just I'm telling you, I went shout out to Sacred Sons, man, because they just helped me so much, bro. Been to that place, Sacred Sons. You a man? You looking for brothership? Brothership is the medicine. Shout out to Sacred Sons, and you guys need to go see them, because we need a man. Need each other, man. Yeah. Men giving each other permission to do what they need to do. You know, we got a certain role in society, just like women have their own certain role. We all got certain roles. Yeah. Right. And men sharpen men, bro. And you know, and one thing, as like you always hear it all over and over again, but that's why when you call. When you write a word, you're spelling, bro. We're putting spells on each other, right? And I'm putting spells on myself. So I keep saying I'm trying to do some. It's like, no, bro, you're You're doing doing it. it. Yeah. Because trying seems like it doesn't seem as powerful as doing, bro. So why don't you talk to yourself in the most powerful way that you can? Yeah. You know? I agree. Yeah. So I'm doing it just like you're doing right now, man. So what else you trying to do, man? We got got the shit going. So what we got going? We got... We got lava runs right now. You trying to make that bigger? Or how big you trying to make that? I don't know. I'm we really just, not sure yet. I'm just going with it. Okay. I'm taking advantage of the opportunity right now that, you know, COVID has kind of given towards me. And uh, 
I, I could see it being bigger. Okay. I'm just going to wait and see. I'm going to play it by ear. Play it by, like, you know, week by week, see how it goes. Because if stuff opens back up, bro, you know I have a lot of competition. Yeah. So. So what? You I mean, I know. Now. I know. Hey, bro, hey, we're going to have Vegas Lava Tournaments, bro. Yep. Tournaments. I have leagues in there. Leagues, Look, bro. It's, it's, it's going to be its own league, dog. <laughs> I'm putting that shit into existence right now, bro. But let it flow. Whatever it is that you want, man. I ain't trying to project on you, but this is your life. You do. And I, hey, man, I'm, I'm excited to fucking go witness that shit, man. And I really appreciate you being here, dog. I appreciate you sharing your story. Appreciate you and, um, guys. Yeah, man. We're here. Is there anything else you want to say out to the people, bro? Uh, shout out Coach Gill and shout out Coach Gary. That's all I got to say. All right. Those well, are the they, two that started Goda. Okay. I got to throw that out Hell there. Hell yeah. Well, shout out to them, man. Yeah. Because this shit, I mean, you're helping my boy, so I appreciate you. We rolling. We going. And he going to show me a little thing or two and get my shit right, too. Right. Yeah. He was watching. We went downstairs to get some water. And he was like, well, he's like, man, I'm over here looking at the way you're walking. Like he said before. <laughs> yeah, but that's like, what it takes <clears throat> to yeah. be great. You just got to keep showing up, bro. It's a and curse. see it everywhere. I'm literally, I look at everybody, their kids, the whole family. I'll break, I'll break them down. My naked eyes getting really good. That's good though. That's what but, you need. Yeah. So wait, I mean, that's what I'm trying to do right here with this talking shit and yeah. trying to learn how to pork at, you know, it's the same thing. You just yeah. got to keep doing it. everywhere I go, man. You know, a lot of things is like for us, it's like active listening for me, yeah. you know, really paying attention. So keep, keep doing that shit with the eye, bro. Hell yeah! I, really quick, I, I was just curious. So, like, with the Goda stuff, is it um, is that like so? You're saying like that you work with them. Is it just more you take film and you you like analyze it and like adjust people? Great or question. Is it like a, or is it more like an exercise or both? Like you implement it within exercise. Yeah. What does it actually look like? It's a yeah. good yeah. mix of both. So an assessment will start off with a slow motion video of you like you know walking, squatting, stuff like that, and then just from that video. We can tell what areas you need work on. And then from there, we'll go about drills. You know, there's a go to app. There's so much stuff that's growing from them that will help you just recode your body. That's what we say, you know? Yeah. Working towards the it's recoding. Coding. Yeah. Because Patterns. Well, I'm, I'm 30 right now and I've probably been moving bad or decoding my body for at least 15, 16, 17 years. Yeah. So you're not going to fix that in one year. Exactly. You know, you got to understand that it's a process. So... Best thing you could do is get with a coach, have them do an assessment, and then from there they'll they'll uh, give you drills to so slowly do. What do your workouts look like now then? <sighs> no weights. Go is beautiful. There's no weights at all. Okay. It doesn't hurt, you know. Well, I mean, there is some pain, but it's a good burning pain we were talking about. Yeah. You know? So, like, you do body push-ups, squats. S- like push-ups, stuff, squats, all that. Handstands, like anything that's pretty much on your own type stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, simple little stuff that, you know, you really wouldn't think to work out. And a lot to, has to deal with your hips. So your hips, a ball and socket. Same mm-hmm. thing with your ankle. Mm-hmm. Or more more so your shoulders. Your okay. hips, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a ball and socket. But we don't use it like that or even work it out like that. Mm. So a lot of the workouts are like hips, it's just, knees, okay. and ankles. Gotcha. You know, leading up to the lower back. Really full body, but really focused a lot more, I, I would say, on the lower body. I mean, those are the biggest muscles. It's kind of core, bro. Bro. Your core is fucking... Yeah, more like that's most people's lower back pain come from a weak core, right? Yeah, so it's like the, the muscles that you don't think sta- the stabilizer muscles and stuff like that. Yeah, hell yeah. So what is like a normal thing for you when you do that, or what a normal workout, or what is a normal just body, really just body weights? Like I saw you do like a lizard, the lizard walk or lizard crawl. Yeah, lizard you do crawl. a lot of crawling. That stuff's like super good for your full body. Your spinal engine will just move, and spine torque really good. But, like, the fluidity in that is money, bro. It, you'd be surprised. Try to lizard crawl and be like, I'm tired. Like, hell yeah. This bro, people be laughing at me because I love liz- I love crawling upstairs. Yeah, bro. That's, yeah, like, I'm telling I'm crawling you. upstairs instead of walking up those bitches at the house. You got to record it for me one time so I can okay. help you break it down and okay. show you, like, what, you know. Hell yeah. What's, what, no, we're going to get on this thing, bro. Yeah. Because I feel that's all my focus is right now. Is I don't really, uh, my thing is the body weight and running. Yeah. Human beings are the most endurance animal on the planet, right? Yeah. So why why am I not running? Running is like a na- normal, na- it's a natural thing what human beings have been doing f- since we've existed. So right. it's like, no, uh, I love the yoga. I love the yoga because it's also mental. Yeah, you know, and it's that connection between your breath and breathing. Breathing is life, man. So like those are the two things. So it's like yoga. This shit, I'll get on this go to thing too, and then running. That's all I really want to focus on. Yeah, yeah, man. So I, we good, bro. I stopped lifting weights, so I'm with you. Hell yeah, I'm all like body weight, and you know, I want to be able to like move myself, man, bro. I, I don't. Like, 
I'm still trying to figure out if I'm just getting older, but it does seem like people are moving away from like w- using weights to work out. It doesn't it? It seems like that to me. I don't know if I, I just I'm getting older and I'm around more people who just like <clears throat> are moving away from that because yeah. they're older or whatever. But it does. I don't know. I feel like the uh, chasing the like bodybuilding physique is just not as in style, bro. If if a, if a workout could be in style, I don't know. Yeah. But it, but like you know what I mean. I, I I just don't think that's like as desirable as it used to be. Mm. When I was younger, it was like get as big as you can. How much can you bench? Right. Yeah. You know what I mean. All that see, stuff is painful. Yeah, and that's it's, why. Yeah, it seems like people are moving away from it. Yeah. I could be. You know, no, bro. Projecting my cul- anecdotal. No, evidence. the whole culture is moving though. Like I feel like a lot of things. I, I saw. I forgot what it was, but a lot of different restaurants are putting more health. I saw uh, they're freaking putting matcha in different places. Like you wow. would never think matcha would be. I forgot what it was. I'm all fucked up. But it was like the we're moving, bro. And I think as a culture, it might have been so. We're in a transformational state, bro. I feel like yeah, it's like the individual's been hurting for so long that now the culture has is is like erupting with hurt. So now it's just like no one likes to be where we're at right now. No. So that's why, like, this shit's so important. Yeah. You know, like, get back in your body, you know? And that's why I'm, like, decisive element because it's just, like, that's why I want to push out. You are in charge. It don't matter what what the government puts out, no matter what anybody's push on you, man, it's all on you, dude. You can it figure is. this shit out yeah. somehow, little by little, man. And that's what you've been doing, bro. Trying, I'm, you I'm know. Doing, I'm doing it. I'm doing. And that's it. We're reprogramming your language, too, man. It's just yeah. like the body. Nothing happens overnight. Yep. So anybody tells you it's a quick pill, don't listen to that shit. Anybody listens to tell you that's going to take you 30 days and that's it, don't listen to the shit. Like, it takes time and consistent learning, period. Yeah. Nothing you want comes easy. Nothing worth it. Nothing least. worth it. Yeah. There you go. Nothing worth it. Yeah. Nothing that's going to stay for a long time, too. Like, yeah, longevity, bro. Yeah. I agree. When they told me my recode process, I was just like, two years two three years what do you mean like you know it don't matter how much you work it's just i gotta understand it's a process so, it's a process you know, trying to explain that to other people too is it's hard but once you get it you know it's worth it hell yeah so we're gonna have to be here back here again so i might have to have you in oh again. yeah within oh, a, the need, next yeah. year bro we'll do like uh every six months or some shit bro like how you feeling now man yep. and what's been going on with you now start catching up and then we'll do so you you he's like, he's like, well, November. he's like, well, I'm working with the Raiders now. And, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, right now, you know, a lot of the linemen are having trouble with their knees. <laughs> and so, like, I've been really f- focusing on that. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> that is what it's going to be, bro. That's what we're going to do. He's like, man. actually, the center for Oak- or, well, Oakland, Las Vegas. <laughs> well, Vegas is good now because we're turning into a little like we're getting more. What Henderson got its own uh, was it American Hockey League. Oh yeah, like I did tier see two. That. I seen that. So like we got the Golden Knights and then we got the Henderson Silver Knights. We got the soccer team, right? That soccer team that the took women's over. women's basketball team. The, ba- the, the aces, aces. Yeah, right? Bro. And we got the 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 baseball team up in Summerlin now. Well, we've had that, but that's gotten a little bigger. They've yeah. been talking the about Raiders. The, the Suns coming here for a while. You probably know more about basketball? that than I would. What? Yeah. Uh, I've, I heard that. That. I've, I've heard that. I've heard that. that. But I heard it like it's harder for basketball teams to move because the stadiums are smaller. Yeah. That like it's not as uh, a big of a reason to move. Something to do with that. I could see I that. Don't know. Uh, I don't know either. I mean, I'm from Arizona. I think that would be tight if the Suns followed me here. <laughs> He's like, yeah. AZ, let's go. I wouldn't be mad. I'll be happy with the Suns. Man, I'll be t- I'm just I'm hyped with anything, man. All this sports, bro. We've been I've been here since I was seven, bro. I'm fucking 33. Like <laughs> there was no teams yeah. here, bro. There no, was seriously. nothing going on. I remember my my dad be hated being here. It's like he's so used to Cali and like, dude, there's so much shit to do. But yeah. little by little, Vegas is we're coming, bro. Yeah, it's coming up. And the strip, you know, everyone's like Vegas, you know, to go to the fucking strip. Like, nah, bro. Like strip is kind of like a whole yeah. nother. It's played out. We don't even go there. Yeah, most people whole... that live here, it's like, dude. Well, especially that with COVID, I think I went to the strip maybe you know i've worked on a strip since i moved here and i think last year i probably went to the strip what five six times yeah all of 2020 well also i wasn't drinking but that helps with that too but and yeah COVID, bro but yeah COVID, <laughs> and COVID, bro. Bro. And COVID. yeah yeah the strip's a wild place right now bro i saw a video of this dude fucking drunk dude climbing the uh, I've seen that the oh, Eiffel saw? Tower yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, "What the hell?" People really? are ready really? to get out, man. Yeah, active. They're, yeah, they're ready to get active. They're ready to move. And you know, I think it was a good thing too because I remember when I tried to f- I buy a bike. My son was just growing. We already had a bike for him, but he was like growing. So I was like, "We got to get this full of newer bike." Yeah, I grew. I it. wasn't thinking pandemic and all bikes are sold the fuck out. <laughs> but goddamn right, all the bikes were sold Yo. out, bro. 
It took me like three months literally to find a bike his size. Damn, I was that's, like, damn. That's nuts. So hopefully it sticks, <clears throat> man. People got to get outdoors. You know, we got to get outdoors. We got to be moving. We got your blood is meant to be flowing. Yeah. You are meant to be flowing. So flow. Another quote, man, when, from that place, right? Life is meant to be lived. So how you living? Mm. I might have to go there. Bro, you're going to have to go Just take notes. There. This sounds like I need to go there. S- Sacred Sons, right? Sacred Sons, bro. Shout out to them. I'm going through their little leadership thing. This man. That's one thing, bro. Men's work, bro. Men need work, bro. Yeah. And we're going to be here. And we're going to show up. And like this, this, this pain that men got that they feel all the time. I'm just gonna call it out. Like we going, it's different. We gonna change that shit, and yeah. we need we need men to stand up, and we need real men. You can be soft and ready to kill a motherfucker at the same goddamn right. time. You ain't gotta yell at your kids, man. Yeah, you know, there's another way you can manipulate that. Is it not? I'm sorry, I don't like that word. There's another way you can change that. There's another way you can talk to them and still get the point across and still know that they love uh, that you love them, and there's still all that other shit. And yeah. So shout out to Sacred Sons. They they just starting, man. I'm going through that. Those dupe, those those guys, man. I, when I went there, I knew I had to go there, man. I watched, like I told you, I saw that video in December. Um, and it was just like a feeling that I was like, I gotta go there. That's where I gotta go. And they held space for me and let all my shit, my brother's pain, bro, all the fucking daddy issues and all the other shit that came out. It came out and it just, bro, it set up a whole new state for me. And I was like, okay, this is what life can be. And now when I come home. I got to do the work yeah. to make that life a reality every day. How I treat to my lady, how I connect with my fr- my sons, how I connect with my friends and my family. How do I show up? But the real, the, the real realization that I learned was that I, I hurt so much for other people because I love myself. I love myself, but really, I love other people. I love other people, bro. I'm glad you're doing better. If you were getting worse, that's going to hurt me. Yeah. And people need to acknowledge that shit. We need to acknowledge that watching other people hurting hurts us yeah and if it don't that's because you got so many walls up yeah so many defense mechanisms so many fucking trigger points that you don't want to go into and face yourself and it all comes back to you being the decisive element because if you can hold space for yourself and allow yourself to feel and allow yourself to hurt and allow yourself to go through what you need to go through you can do it for other people yeah yeah man i'm telling you i'm I'm, I'm gonna hopefully have them on here one day and hey, we got to chat up and see what their journey was and see what they come about. And because it's so important, man, we need we need a brotherhood like no more. I love their saying. I, I'll tell you, I'm on that shit right now. Um, no more lone wolves. We a Say tribe. Less. Yeah, we tribe culture, bro. We in it together. Yeah, we in this shit together like it and not period. So with that. Bro, I'm grateful for you, bro. I'm really grateful. Like I told you, I've been feeling that we need to chat. We need to talk. And I hope this connection just starts developing more and more, man. Yeah. And I'm with you in whatever you need me to do. If I can show up for you, I'm fucking there. Let's fucking roll. And let me, I want to come see that fucking your ball, bro. I want to see yeah. you get it in, see what you're doing, go and step in your place. You hooked me up with this Goda a little bit, man. And mm-hmm. I appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate you Thank being you there guys for my having brother. Me. Yeah, bro. Grateful for you guys, too. Hell yeah, I think, bro. I think you're going to... Uh get a lot of people to i don't know i'm excited for to release this episode shout out Hell mike yeah. shout mean, out mustache mike man mustache mike i've been saying that though huh ronnie he is bro i he said it excited. yesterday like, this shit is this because i thought you were it. coming yesterday and i was like i was like oh hell yeah and he was like no 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 he's coming tomorrow i was like oh shit bro okay, i'm not gonna lie i turned down two other podcasts oh this is like last month you know what i mean and oh, I, hell yeah. I just i just one feel like i wasn't ready yet not fully ready, you know, yeah. or even like it was something I didn't want to do. But this one I put down on my calendar and I was excited for it. So I was looking forward to Hell this Hell yeah, too. bro. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that, man. That's Always. what I'm telling you. You're, you're doing uh, other, they were asking you because they want to know about your like whole like story or whatever. With more Goda. So, it was more so Goda and the Lava Runs. But, you know, this one, I don't know. I just, I wanted to do this one. You know, it wasn't just focused on that. It was really about me and my life story. So. I, I felt more comfortable doing this one. Yeah, 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 bro. Because sure. that's that's and that's what that's what I'm trying to go after with this thing, man. It's like everyone has their story, bro. And I feel like at, well, from what I'm, I'm chasing the feeling, bro. Yeah. And what I'm realizing, what I see as this keeps going on, is that everyone brings a unique piece of the pie. Yeah. Each conversation I'm having, as I stated before, it develops into something specific. Yeah. Right. Movement is this. Movement is life, bro. You stop moving, you die. Yeah. Like, period. So 
I that's why it's like and for you when we go back to my brother bro like not a lot of people know my brother not a lot of people know the whole story like I haven't gotten to the whole story with the podcast yet but that started like I was depressed I was I went through all that shit had kids war Afghanistan all and yeah. all this stuff and we'll get into that later but everybody has a story and they have a choice to overcome that and I'm trying to bring acknowledge acknowledge you bro yeah you got that shit and you doing it and you overcoming it and guess what all these people watching are they listening like i hope that like i said if you're not if you don't feel this shit you don't feel what he's saying inside of you the pain when he says he couldn't move his arm to go up from being an athlete if you don't recognize that there is things inside of you that is blocking that yeah and i'm trying to show we got to get rid of these blocks man and we got to feel these feelings and understand why we're hurt because that's the way the world is. You feel, you'll be able to feel more and then you'll be able to be happier. Yeah. And then you'll be a higher and fucking live in the life and go after what you want. And then the connections come and the family comes and then all the, all the real shit you're seeking is the people next to you, that's bro. So true. So true. Like as men, I feel like, you know, we're, we're not allowed to be empathetic or even sympathetic. Yeah. You know, for someone else, it's almost like, well, that didn't happen to me or that's not me. So I can't like, you know, yeah, I can't really feel like bad for you or something but trust me i i'm starting to notice that more too hell yeah bro because it's like we're all just we're brothers bro yeah we all on this fucking earth man let's fucking chill let's party let's have a good time let's put in work let's fucking move let's dance that's ah uh, hyping me up right now let's bro. do it together basically exactly yeah. together because as we do it together that's the whole thing so and that's the connection between the individual and the collective yeah it's a dance between the two man I, I figure out who I am. The collective starts to figure out with all the people and they move. And then the individual goes back to themselves and then it moves back into collective. Yeah. And it is a wave. And that's what we're seeing in our culture. But all the pain has been erupting and it keeps coming and it keeps coming. But that's also the gateway. Yeah. The pain is the gateway, bro. Right. You didn't know you had a problem until you had pain. Right. And people don't really pay attention. Right. So if we can teach the youngsters how to be go to and how to be a decisive element when they're young, will they even see all the unnecessary pain? Won't have to. They won't have to. Yeah. But as long as we keep the real ones there, because I know that, what is that? That's a quote, like, we, I forgot the whole shit. I don't even care. But pretty much we got to, we got to keep, we got to teach the, the youngsters, man, to be different so we can have a whole different planet and the planet can live and we can move and enjoy and dance and move, bro. Yeah. So once again, bro, I'm glad you're here, man. We'll Thank connect you, bro. six months, a year. We'll start planning. Oh, stuff. yeah. We'll I got to come back. Up. We'll keep coming this back out. I'm Fucking. Uh, Instagram page, right? What is it? Goda.lava. Goda.lava, man. See this man. He comes out. You play basketball. You're in Vegas. Go see him. Hit him up um, and do this shit. Once again, I'm grateful for you. If you guys like this on YouTube, tell your friends, tell your family. We're trying to get this shit out, man. And honestly, I'm just not going to quit. <laughs> so we here. Get used to it. We rolling. Shout out to Mustache Mike over Mustache there. Mustache Mike. Right? We here holding it down. <laughs> and uh, subscribe, like, share. Peace out. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Peace.